You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and I'm joined again by Ricky Baez. Ricky, I don't know why I even say it that way at this point, because you're you're here with me almost every single time. But we are your source for everything, hiring, staffing, and recruiting. And we are back on a not-so-beautiful Friday morning in uh, yeah. Central Florida today. It's a little gloomy. It is gloomy. And uh, to talk, and you're right, I'm I'm here almost every week now. Do you think now I can stop signing in? I can maybe get an ID card to uh, plug in, like everybody else has to run this office. Or uh... <laughs> you want to be you want to be a permanent fixture? I mean, I'm just I'm, I keep signing in. I mean, I know I know the reception is now. I mean, her name is April. <laughs> she likes flowers, long walks on the beach. Uh, now I'm kidding. <laughs> where, I don't know where that's going, but but we are we are here and we are here to talk about about staffing. And let's let's start with good news today. Can we do that? Let's do that. Let's do that. Do you know what the good news is? Are you are you in the loop? I well, is it the Josh report that just came out? Did you see that? Were you have you been looking at my TikTok account, Ricky? No, no, no I know, I know you're a big TikToker. <laughs> I'm a big TikToker, but not for information that I need. It's always for entertainment. <laughs> uh, the jobs report came out, and uh, it it beat expectations to a significant yeah. degree. Uh, Five hundred and seventeen thousand uh, new. Workers added to U.S. payroll for this week. That's a big number. I, we averaged in the U.S. 400,000 a month in 2022. And, um, you know, it, it really runs in contrast to all the layoff uh, news that we seem to be surrounded by, right? Yeah, it does. And and again, this news continues every single week, Pete. Every single week we see more and more organizations that are, you know, having these difficult conversations. But these job reports come out again. We talked and, and we called it. We called it when we first noticed this, what, a, uh, a few months ago, right? We're like, these numbers just are not adding up and they keep getting farther and farther apart. It's they really continue to not add up, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, if, for, if you're in the world of, of, of staffing or recruiting or really anything to do with, with hiring, you in, in your LinkedIn feed, um, if you if you're active on LinkedIn at all, it probably shows what mine does and everyone else that I talk to. It's just a lot of people who are looking for a job right now who are unexpectedly <laughs> unemployed. And I don't know if that's you know just sort of bias. It's created by the the the, the we're around a lot of people who are in recruiting, um, and and we know that companies like Amazon and and Meta hired a lot of recruiters to ramp up their staff during COVID, and then they've ramped back down. Um, so maybe maybe we're not seeing the full picture, but it sure looks like a lot of people are unemployed, uh, d given those numbers, and and the unemployment rate went down a little bit as well. It's down to, um, I believe, three point four percent. Three point four, I saw earlier. Which I mean, again, it's great news for the economy. It really is. But I think we are we are looking at this economy. We are looking at this job report through a lens that doesn't really exist for us right now, because we're seeing it through the lens that we're used to pre pandemic. Now we're seeing it with all these different factors coming into the, uh, in, in, into the workforce today, because come on, the workforce today is radically different than when it was 30 years ago, right? You have more W uh, you have more 1099 um, uh, contractors than we did uh, 30 years ago because the technology is making it just that much easier. I think that's also feeling again, no data behind what I'm about to say. That's also fueling these numbers, and we just don't know how to cook with those ingredients just yet. I, I, but they're not. I, if you think about what you just said, your these payroll numbers wouldn't be included. Uh, I'm sorry, freelancers wouldn't be included in these Would payroll not. numbers. Yeah. So it's it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mystery, and I'm not going to. This will sound conspiratorial, and that's not um, what I intend to do right now uh go down that path but uh -huh. i'm not really sure who decides these are the numbers and, and i and i think about that every time <laughs> they come it. out from the bureau of labor statistics they gather data through some um through some method maybe they detail it and i just haven't i'm going to go back and read it rick i, I will do okay. that. i, I believe it. adp payroll contributes but you know we we've let, let's be real. We've we've seen inconsistent data uh, over the past couple of years in a number of different areas. And so it does beg the question, if we know companies are, are publicly laying off in significant numbers, mm -hmm. we know 
if you look at LinkedIn, that there are a lot of people who are looking for jobs right now, yeah. more so there are always a lot of people looking for jobs, but it feels and seems and looks like there's significantly more than there was a few months ago. Do you, do you agree with that? I do agree with that, which again, further confuses the assessment uh, because just, just real quick, because I know you said that there was uh those 1099s would not be included, but I'm thinking the more 1099s we have now that used to be W2s before, then they're not being included yet. That number's small. So that's why to me is, is, is confusing, but yeah, it, it's uh, I just had to throw that in there. Sorry. Well, it, it's just, it's, 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 it's hard to what, we see what we're being told doesn't, um, you know, doesn't really coincide with, with yeah. how it looks and feels. And uh, the being in the staffing industry uh, in having lots of peers around the country, I can tell you that uh, almost without exception, everyone I've, I've spoken with has uh, indicated a, a pretty significant slowdown in, in hire. Yeah. And I trust, the staffing industry more than anyone else, because this is, this is all we do. And um, it, I was surprised, let's just say to okay. see, Hey, great news. We added half a million you know, jobs this month. Um, and right underneath <laughs> layoff at this organization and layoff at that organization. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Now those, those layoffs, even though they're public and of course not to minimize those when an organization uh, lays off five, thousand people that is a huge number for any individual company and certainly uh you know a very t challenging thing for the individuals who were laid off but when you mm -hmm. look at how that impacts the 165 million or so in the american workforce it, it doesn't really move the number very much so even if you add um you know, all, all of those together that have been public i i just don't think uh you know, it, it the, the news is shocking, but the result of it clearly, well, I won't say clearly, seems to not affect the job market very much. It doesn't, but but you know what I'm starting to notice there, Pete, um, which is which is really interesting, especially with all these two different waves and the different information that's in social media right now. I'm starting to see that the more layoff we talk about, the more layoff we hear about, and the more um, the workforce is the the whole dynamic is changing. Um, there are other things about the old school way of doing things that's evolving. For example, a couple of weeks ago, you and I were talking about um, about um, the best way to lay somebody off. I mean, we we did talk about it and whether should we do it via via Zoom or email, and we went back and forth. Did you hear what HubSpot did the other day oh. with their layoff? Now, I don't know if this is true or not. I saw this on somebody else's page, and it's a meme. And this is actually pretty good, Pete. Here's what they did. So they laid off 7% of their workforce, right? And they sent out an email. And here's what that email said. There are several things you can do. Obviously, the uh, the uh, person explained what's going on. It was a video. I mean, I'm sorry. It was it was a company wide email, um, uh, Zoom call. Explain what's happening, what's going on, and say, hey, an email is going to come out with this information. And it gave them a lot of really good options. So it's like severance. We will pay five months severance plus an additional week for every year you've been with HubSpot up to seven months total. So regardless how long you've been there, you're going to get five months either way and a week for every year of service up to you get seven months, right? Not many organizations do that because many organizations just start off with the one week of pay for every year service, but there's more medical benefits will be extended through the service period up to five months and equity. Uh, they're accelerating vesting through the first of April. That way some people can actually make it in. Here's one I found interesting. Laptops and F uh, work from home setup. Keep it. Don't bother oh. sending it back. Go ahead and keep it. And they, they'll erase all the information um, um, uh, through the air. Um, and then later on, uh, they'll have career support, connection, and your boss is going to call you later on with more information. What do you think about that? I, 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 what I think is that that's great for the employees. It, it helps them. Um, but I can't help but think so five months five months of severance five months to start off and then a week for every year right, so five minimum yeah. yeah up to seven i mean that's it's it's a it's a big expense item and if you can afford to do that why not have them work what 
Yeah, right. I, I, why not have them work for three months to see if they can get out of the hole? Like, let's <laughs> okay. Let's all right. So we're there. We're there because at first I'm thinking, wow, that is really generous. That now that's a way that really is a way who to to lighten the blow. But then I started thinking, that's a lot of money. Like how much? If they would have just taken this money, they would have spent here invested in some other efficiencies maybe they'll come out of the hole that's causing them to put this plan together to begin with you know i, I suppose right and, unless they've determined that um these employees just there's no value to those employees i mean but it, you know in and with technology as you mentioned changing rapidly yeah i think that's what twitter has done they've they've deemed uh, you know these this very large group of employees unnecessary to run the business and uh, look, I, 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 I think back to my, um, my corporate days and there were always, there always seemed to be a number of people. You know, it was kind of, every company has this, this kind of running sort of joke where you, okay, I don't know what these people do. You know, they just, <laughs> they, there's, there's jobs that just exist. I mean, we, we, we know that, um, but, it's weird, right? Yeah, the whole thing so is just odd, right? I mean, we can lay off that many people, but we have the money to pay for for them to not work. Um, maybe fiscal management hasn't been their strength in all of this. Or how bad was that hole? I mean, how 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 bad was it? Because the other side of that coin is, how do we get to such a bad place that spending all this money is considered a a uh, a money saving uh um innovation right, that, right. so that's so right so the right. presumably the the layoff is a cost savings measure right and so you're gonna pay all this why didn't we see this happening a year ago to prevent this right why why do we have to be a defcon one which is the bad one one or five i don't don't, don't do that to me that, <laughs> defcon whatever <laughs> Because I someone just, recently publicly got it wrong and it was bashed. So I'm I'm going to abstain <laughs> from that conversation. Got it. Okay. I would ask Google, but it's yeah, she's worse. Um, so I just assume Google. So look, um, it, from from my perspective, from my point of view, um, just bringing it all back together. Did you, all did these, you just wait? I have to stop. Did you just call Google a she? I just uh, yes, I did. Okay. You know uh, what? Let's move on from that too. But I just <laughs> want to make sure I heard you correctly on how you. How you perceive Google? Sell, oh God, yeah. Let's just move on. Yeah. All right. Where were we? We well, we were we were we were talking about how, how why they didn't plan ahead better. Yeah, and yeah. I get I get that why you wouldn't plan ahead better. But I I I always struggle when I see these. Look, it's it's very generous. It's great. I mean, if you were an employee impacted by that, mm -hmm. um, they you, I'm sure they're extremely thankful. Yeah. But from a business standpoint, uh huh. An, yes. It's an odd thing to do. It, you know, okay. it, it just is. Now, Ricky, uh, I, I just don't. You know, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know how companies get to that point, right? And I don't think you do either. So we're mm -hmm. not going to solve that today. Neither of us are, um, are are in the CFO uh, business. So we'll uh, we'll we'll move on. Yeah. But um, yeah, weird times. And so that there's an article that that was produced or published in the uh, Wall Street Journal yesterday that um says the bosses are back in charge and and what do you think about that are the bosses back in charge now well here's the thing according to this article again this is the wall street journal the bosses are back in charge by chip cutter um oh and theo francis so essentially what they're saying is uh it, the pandemic quote unquote is over and now leaders and organizations are starting to learn new ways how to how to conduct business. But some other leaders are saying, come back to the office. Still, come back to the office. Come back to the office. And they're paying differently. Uh, about a couple of weeks ago, I went ahead and put a, um, um, a poll on LinkedIn to ask if you was being offered, what is more important to you? Is it base more than commission, commission more than base? or the flexibility to work from home and build your own schedule at 10% less of what the original offer was at. A lot of people selected that one. I would and expect most would. I would expect not many, not okay. many, because what that's going to do, that's going to make that now from an employee 
uh, from an employee's perspective, I I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to jeopardize my my income just because I I want flexibility. Now that's just me. I know that's not everybody else. But I guess what I'm saying is the more and more people do that, the more and more common is going to become. And now that again, just by working from home, it's going to be one of those things that you're going to see in the compensation package as common as HMOs. And it's changing. So this pandemic, what this article is talking about, is talking about how they're laying people off, the way they're laying people off, and how everything is being restructured and bringing people back into the office. A lot of the people who were laid off are folks who didn't want to come back into the office anyway. So that kind of puts some mm. people on the shopping block. And that made me think, because a lot of people would say, well, that's discrimination. It's not. It's not, right? Because that's not protected by law from an EEOC perspective. But this article is, it's its really interesting because again, it, it, it talks about the notion of there's a power struggle between employees and business leaders. And I don't think there is a power struggle. What about you? I think there is. I, I, I don't know if that's the right phrase for it, but I think there's a, a big um, contrast taking place right now. First, you have companies that uh, are, are choosing to make employees come back to the office and you have those who are not. Mm -hmm. So Correct. immediately, like we've talked about, uh, like you, you just alluded to, but we talked about it in some depth a couple of weeks ago. This is a this is a business decision that's going to impact your ability to tr attract and retain employees. Uh, um, no question about it. Okay. So that needs to be considered, and then and then you know the then then after that consideration, if you decide for whatever reason you want your employees back, knowing that you know, depending on the the industry and the the type of business and the geography and all those things, there's a very good chance some of your competitors will not. Uh, make that requirement. Yeah. Um, then you have to deal with the fallout from it yeah. and how you deal with it as an organization is um, that's a minefield, right? Because you could take a hard stance and say, come back or else um, uh, companies are doing that right now. Uh, you know, you can give them a, a, a warning, a time, you know, it's, but, but I guess it depends on how uh, interested you are to retain your employees versus correct letting that be sort of a, um, uh, 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 a subtle form of a layoff. But I would suspect in many, you know, when, when you lay, when you, when there's a, when a layoff is necessary, a downsizing is necessary. Nobody cuts their top employees. Right? Nobody cuts their top producers. So I, I would, I would argue and suspect that in many cases like this, the top, producers are the ones that are going to say, I don't need to come back if I, choose, I don't want to. I have well, other options, <laughs> right? Correct. Uh, because, you know, from, again, just generally speaking, when HR is involved in a layoff, they always say cut X percent and we always focus on the bottom, right? Of course. Um, right. It, it, so, but, but here's the thing. It's, I understand some leaders would say, no, 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 I need these, these positions back in the office. But the pandemic proven that these positions can be successful not in the office. So there's no really rationale. Somebody can argue, well, these positions need to be in the office. Well, no, they don't. Because if they were not in the office during the pandemic and they were still successful during the pandemic working from home, then the need just isn't there other than maybe the trust isn't there. And that has got nothing to do with work and more to do with the leader or the culture of the organization. Well, some positions do need to be on site, right? Some, you know, okay. you're not, you're not, you know, a, a, a doctor, you know, a surgeon needs to be on site, right? So, we, so, they, we, so they never work from home during the pandemic, though, because that that position cannot be done from home. Oh, uh, good point. Good point. You were never able to do it from home. That, you were never able. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good point. That right. that makes sense. Yeah. Here's a, here's what I will say based on my experience. I, I believe this strongly. Some employees need to be on site, whether they acknowledge it or not. And I have someone in mind right now um, who uh, uh, is, a, is a person who um, I know it just has a very difficult time um, managing their own schedule. 
and 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 adhering to to that. And I I, I was just thinking about this um, independently of of this conversation uh, a couple of days ago. That wow, that this this person is probably suited to be in an office. Would would benefit by the structure and the oversight that comes with being in an office where. Most no, look. I don't think anyone wants to be uh, micromanaged, and I don't think any it, anyone wants someone looking over their shoulder. But for a large portion of, I won't say that. For some portion of <laughs> of of the workforce, it, it's almost a necessity. Do you do you agree? That people they may not to- even realize it. I just, I mean, as a as a you know, someone who's been on this planet for fifty one years. And and has observed a lot of um, a lot of different types of people as someone who's, you know, uh, had a lot of different employees as someone who's worked with a lot of a lot of uh, other employees and yeah. just my peers. I, I I was working remotely in two thousand four and two thousand five, two thousand six, yeah. and I was working for a large organization back then. This prior to starting uh, my business, and um, I said two thousand six, not not true. I started at the end of two thousand five, but for the the few years prior. And I can tell you, I could name names, which I will not, um, of who was remote and not um, and not working, spending a lot of time, well, yeah, <laughs> you know, doing yeah. things that didn't involve work, and ultimately it caught up to them, and they were, yeah, you know, they lost their jobs as a result. I'm in a situation now where I'm the last one to know. They didn't; I, these people, in some cases, were my peers. They didn't mind if I knew mm-hmm. uh, that they were off goofing around. Um, now, no one's gonna. I'm not gonna. Yeah. You know, I'm the boss. I'm not going to find out if anyone's around. <laughs> no, nobody's right? going to say. Hey, guess that, what I'm doing right now. <laughs> that's and and but look, I I I think that stuff catches up with people ultimately. So I don't spend time worrying about that. What I well, my point is simply that there are people who need structure and need that kind of oversight in order to um in order in order to stay focused. So coming from somebody who now works for himself. Um, and I'm, I'm in charge of my of my own schedule. I could not agree with that more. I mean, I re- I really do agree with that because with me, I it's harder. If I if I knew I had to do a presentation for a CEO, I knew what I had to do. I'll get up at whatever time I have to get up. I I I will make it happen because I want to make sure I deliver. I over deliver with the services that I promised. But if it's just me and I'm holding myself accountable, I'm not good at that, Pete. <laughs> So for me, it's that much harder for me to do what I said to myself that I am going to do. I'm going to wake up at 7 a.m. and do ABC. 9.30, I'm going to do this. If it's just me, it's easier for me to bend that discipline than it is for somebody else. So to bring this back to this question, to this conversation, when I had to go into an office, it was easier for me to keep to my schedule. So you're 100% right. When it's just me right now, it takes just that much more energy for me to keep to that same schedule that I did before when I was with somebody else. You're right. So when I, my first job out of school, and I've told this story countless times, uh, my first interview question uh, for the job that I ended up accepting was not, was not much of a question at all. The guy who interviewed me said, we work eight to eight, and I've gotten this wrong for him. I get this right this time, Ricky. We work eight to eight. <laughs> Monday through Thursday and eight to five on Friday. Should we continue the interview? Now, I was broke. I I, I had a you know, not so great GPA, and my um my uh, my degree wasn't you know going to have companies lining up the, out the door you know yeah. to hire me. So I um but I was motivated and driven, and and there was an opportunity presented to me that um, sounded like I could I could make good money. So I said, "Yep, we should continue." And there was. <laughs> I'm thankful to say now that was not an exaggeration. I was in the office every day before eight. I never left before 8 PM. And I, most of the time I was working, it was 70 hour weeks and the work ethic that was instilled in me in a professional setting. And I'm not talking about as a child or anything like that. In my mm-hmm. first professional job, I was working by today's standards, what sounds probably like ridiculous hours to a lot of people, but that was instilled in me and has stayed with me and has allowed me to be someone who can work at home and yeah. be disciplined. In fact, I work more now than I'm at home and always have back prior to starting my own business as an employee. I was the perfect one to work at home because I, I felt like my day never ended. I just kept that. <laughs> I had dinner with my wife and kids. 
play with them for a little while. My, my, my kids were much younger. My, I only had you know, two of the four were born then. Yeah. Um, and, and I'd go back, I'd stop around six. I'd go back to work around eight and I would regularly work in, you know, past midnight. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, but I, but I think of that often in, in, in these circumstances, because if that had not been instilled in me from the start, if I was you know, like so many young people coming out into the professional workforce today and their first real job, quote unquote, is working at home, you're on your own, no one's looking over you. I mean, I didn't like it in the moment. Don't get me wrong. Mm-hmm. I hated the guy I worked for and I, you know, it was awful. It was a nightmare. Yeah. But in many respects, but it made every everything I've done since seem easy. I've always outworked everyone as a result of that. And anyone who came from that organization for any period of time, um, you know, it's a very successful company. Has the people I know and have followed have have had a similar work ethic instilled in them that has allowed them to succeed professionally um, in many respects. So, I. I I worry about a lot of the younger professionals who who are just sort of left to their own devices at home. It's not necessarily great. I I don't worry as much. I'm I'm excited for them because a lot of them are in my classes right now, and 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 I always tell them I'm 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 envious of this group because you get to see a world that you that you think this is this is the workforce, and that might be true going forward, but. I'm experiencing this with you for the first time <laughs> as well, but my knowledge is going into the office. See, these folks, the way this is going, which don't get me wrong, I, I'm i I'm a fan of flexibility, but the way this is going, these folks are never going to know what it's like to be by the water cooler. They're never going to know what it's like, the camaraderie that's involved by just popping into somebody's office and say, hey, got five minutes to go for a walk, get some coffee? Or what do the smokers say? Smoke break. Right. This is the, the, you, you know who the smokers are, not that I'm advocating smoking. I guess what I'm saying is it is it is going to be a completely different world. I don't worry as much for this workforce, because to me, it's just, they're going to work the same towards a goal, but they're going to use different resources than you and I had available. So you don't and think that, that um, you know, we hear work life balance a lot. Right. Mm-hmm. And there's an old joke. It's been around. I'm sure you've heard it You know, for I mean, gosh. Uh, since I was a child, you know, I don't know who originated it was, uh, you know, you can, you can be successful working half days and you get to choose. Do you work the first half of the day or the second first 12 hours or the second doesn't matter which, right. Um, I don't I, I hear that. Never heard that. No. So, yeah. It was, I don't remember. I don't know who the quotes attributed to, but the, the, it, I kind of screwed it up, but it was, you, you can, you can be successful by only working half days and you get to choose whether you work the first 12 or the second 12. Doesn't okay. matter which. And the point being, you're working 12 hours, right? As Either you're way. half day, half of 24 hours. And okay. um, I subscribe to that. I believe mm-hmm. that. I think the more, the more, the harder you work, the the more you're going to produce and the and the and the more success you're going to have, all other things being equal. So the yeah, you know, of course the comeback is well, work smarter. Well, I'm gonna do that too. Now what? Now what do you got for me? Right. <laughs> the it, you know, I heard an interview. Um, on a podcast, the I heard a podcast earlier this week. It um, this guy was invited to Twitter headquarters to interview Elon Musk, uh, Dave Rubin, uh, on his podcast, and he he flew from Florida and didn't get to interview him the first day. Elon had other stuff going on, and then the next night he went to interview him, and the uh, he kept getting pushed back, pushed back, and the interview did it ended up taking place at midnight. And as he was describing it, there were people coming in and out of Elon's office at midnight. And oh, wow. I heard that and I started to get, I, it, it was in, invigorating to me. I'm like, man, you know, imagine what you can accomplish with that level of intensity and focus, right? So anyone who, you know, p- people criticize Elon Musk for various reasons, but his work ethic is, is legendary. And you hear that and you see surrounded by other people doing that with him. You kind of go, yeah, no wonder he's so successful, right? I mean, it helps that he's yeah. smarter than almost everyone else, but <laughs> yeah, but you can't you can't shortcut that. You can't replace that. Do you, do you agree? I mean, that's what I worry worry so, about so, when I say who, because sometimes that's what it takes. So, I so you're right. You can't shortcut it. Here's where I stop. I 
I I would want to know. Are they walking into that office at midnight conducting whatever business they're conducting because they want to or they feel they have to? Right. So if they want to, it's different because they're motivated. They share the same vision about whatever goal they're working on as Elon. Right. So if they want to do that, that's that's fine. But if they have a family at home and they feel like they have to, I don't know. Is that a toxic work environment? Oh, that word. Um, OK. <laughs> Is there a bleep button? No, I mean it just. It, 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 I was no, interviewing I'm just someone else. It out there. I, I was interviewing someone else earlier this week, and that that came up. And this was a um, a guy who's a um, um, I don't I don't want to get his degree wrong, um, but he 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 has a doctorate in you know in in the in the world of HR and careers and okay. um, in, in personal development. Maybe it is. I, I but he was saying basically that that. It, it, the the implication was that that word is sort of a you know an easy go to a lot for a hard environment a difficult environment a stressful environment that is true and I don't, I don't I'm, not, I'm not trying to put words in his mouth because that's not, not exactly what he was saying but it was you know a toxic work environment could be where someone is 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 using profanity nonstop and being derogatory and you know throwing things and that's toxic. Not, I mean, really, we're working hard and long hours. Is that now toxic? I mean, my point is, do, do the uh, so to, do the other people want to be there with him? I, they're choosing to be. Whether they, I, I don't know why. I mean, everyone has the, the ability to, to 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 turn and walk the other way. Um, I assume they're being paid extremely well. I'm assuming yep. they realize they're doing something that is um, really cool. They're working with someone who's you know just. Yeah, they're working with the richest person on the planet. I mean, there's, would I work until midnight right now? To, if you ask me, Kay, would you spend a year with him, um, you know, working by his side to learn from him? Even at my age and my, you know, I've experienced some level of success. Hell yeah, without a question. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so that. do they want to? I mean, look, I, I don't know. I don't want to work at all. <laughs> if I didn't Isn't have the idea. Well, but they're probably uh, you know gonna gonna be better uh, set for retirement than most people by the time yeah. they're yeah. you know they're they're ready. So everything's a trade off. I I do do I subscribe to wanting to work around you know telling people they should work around the clock? No, of course that's not the point. The point is sometimes it's necessary, and when you're when you're young and you haven't yet earned any kind level of stature or have accomplished anything significant, generally speaking, the one who's going to put forth the most effort is the one who's going to achieve the best results. So, okay. Can I give you two, two quick scenarios? Scenario A, right? It, it, it's it's because you said something that really stuck with me. You said that, of course, you, you're not going to force people to do it. All right. So, yes, you do have um, sometimes it is necessary. But if I'm the leader and I say, hey, I need ABC done, blah, 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 blah. Here's what we need to do. And everybody just knows we're going to stay late because we all subscribe to the same goal. You have an amazing team there. Of course. Yes. Amazing team. But if I have to convince people, come on, can you stay, Margaret? Can you stay, Bobby? Can you stay, Mario? Can you do? And I have to have all these conversations. Something else is going on there. So if nobody wants to stay. So let me, let me jump in. So yeah. when I was coming up my in my you know, first corporate job, mm -hmm. not the not the one, not the staffing job where I was working crazy hours, they told me coming in. But my corporate job, it, it was... It was a cube farm and the directors didn't leave till the VP left. It was on the floor the, and the, the managers didn't leave till the directors <laughs> left and the staff didn't leave till the manager <laughs> left. Right. I mean, it was like ground groundhogs, you know, yeah. popping up, looking to see who was still in their office or their cube, depending on their level. And that, that doesn't exist anymore. And so you, you, what I, what, what I worry about is by default, you you should be putting in you should be grinding, I think when you, you when you're young and trying to prove yourself and learn as much yeah. as you can and that is not universal and I think great that there's a lot of people can would not agree with that and that's fine, um, but what 
the people that I, who I know are successful, all put in that effort at some point, right? Mm -hmm. Whether it was in school and those who didn't do it in school and yet figure out how to be successful, they did it at a, at a different time. And it's easier when you're younger, when you don't have a, see, I, I don't have, when you don't have a wife and, and kids yeah. or a husband and kids and responsibilities and, you know, there's no better time to do it because life gets more complex. And so when I say I worry about the young uh, professionals as a, as a whole, I worry that their perspective on that is not, um, it was, is, is, they don't get that perspective when they're exclusively working at home. That's a very long way to get to that. <laughs> <laughs> I just consume the entire. Episode. I got what you meant. I got what you meant. I, 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 I think they're going to recreate it. I think they're well, going to yeah. gonna, gonna work. Everyone's going to work less. Yeah. Right. And, and guess, guess what's down significantly over the last two years, the productivity of the American workforce is way down and I don't have the stat in front of me. I wish I did. Um, but that's not a coincidence. Okay. I mean, it, it's, we don't have time. This can be another show that can, yeah, it, historically, haven't we been working less as technology gets more evolved and, and, and things get more efficient, we kind of do work less, right? Because that's the goal we want as business owners, at least for me, and I know this is for you. I want to put a product out there that a everybody loves and B makes money, but makes money with minimal effort. Yeah, so, I mean, you can where I mean, look, I'm the message I give to my employees or I'm not going to ask you to work more than 40 hours in a week. But I don't mind saying if you do, you're going to be more successful. Yeah, of course. I, yeah. I, I can't, you know, I'm, I'm not going to I can't be disingenuous, but I, I also I'm not um, you know, going to ask. Yeah, it's just not a requirement I'm I'm going to make. Yeah. It wouldn't be popular. It wouldn't be good for retention. People wouldn't like it. I I know that. But if you go person to person, and you look at their level of achievement, it, you you yeah, there's some correlation there between. And I don't mean in, inside anything I'm directly associated with. I'm mean, just in general, right? No, I, I get you, it. Yeah. Elon Musk is the richest person in the world. Fact. Elon Musk outworks almost everyone That's I've fact. ever heard of. Fact, right? Yeah. So coincidence? No. Would he be the richest person in the world if he worked 40-hour week on average, whatever he no. was doing? Not even close. No. Yeah. No. I, I, I'm with you 100%. Now, there's a, now, you could argue and probably be right that he may be, you know, uh, have a happier life. He may have better and healthier relationships. All that may be true. I'm just specifically talking about success in, in 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 at work, which isn't necessarily um leading to a happy life outside of work. So that's I can well with him, he's found his passion. So I think he is happy. I don't think he would be working as hard as he is right now if he wasn't passionate in what he was doing. All right. It, it, so he's so to him, he's not working. To us, it looks like it because we're like, I don't want to deal with whatever he's dealing with. I mean, some of the money problems he's got are pretty okay. But it, it, it's yes, you do have to put in that work. So um, are the bosses back in charge, Ricky? That's what we're trying to figure out. Are they? I don't. <laughs> yeah. Let's come I, back to that. <laughs> I, I think, I think they, no, um, I think it depends on the industry, depends on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but generally speaking, I think the ship has sailed. And if you're a company who uh, is going to require your your employees to be on site, just like even though I have these beliefs, I think that um, you know, generally speaking, I'd like I'd like everyone to work more and to, and achieve more. Right? I mean, I just uh, but but at the same time, not going to require it. Yeah. So. Do you want people in the office? Sure. Do you have good reason for that? Maybe. But if you start requiring it, that's a different, you're, you're limiting yourself. Just like if I said, hey, everyone, you have to work eight to eight. <laughs> we, I mean, it, we'd it, win a lot more deals, but I, I don't know that I, I might be alone. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be alone and they'll need your services because that 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 turnover is going to be grand. <laughs> It's going to be grand. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Did we beat this one to death also? There no, be? no. Because I <laughs> took us down a, a path that my, you know, old, uh, old man walking uphill both ways, you know, 
to and from school in the, in the uh, snowstorm with one yeah. with one shoe. Yeah, I know that. I'm I'm getting ready to tell my kid that story. <laughs> yeah, but but you know, so we'll get the productivity numbers for next week. Let, let's okay. let's do that because I I want to make sure that um that's that's on point. And look, it's these are these are these are these are conversations that are taking place, you know, everywhere. And there is a balance, and this is the last thing that I'll say on it is between what what would be best for the business um, for from a production standpoint and what would be best for the business from a retention and employee mm. standpoint. Because, but finding that balance, which I think is kind of what you were alluding to earlier, which is how do you how do you create a situation that employees want to do it? And you're not asking, you know, like, hey, you know, and that's what I've always wanted to create. And I can't tell you that I've succeeded in doing so um, to the degree that I'd like, where I never have to tell anyone when to work, that everyone intuitively figures that out for themselves. Like, yep. hey, I can cut out early today, or I need to stay late today. To me, that's the, because right now, I may work crazy hours, and at, sometimes I do, but other times, you know, today I'm going to leave um, at you know, a little earlier than I, uh, you know, I'm going to leave before five to go see my son's basketball game. I'm not going to feel bad about that because I no. was working, you know, earlier this morning. I'm going to do what I need to do this weekend. That's that's how I'd like it to always be. And it, that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but you know what? It's, uh, you're doing it in the office right now there, Pete. So I'll say it, right? Because the, uh, the uh, Four Corner Resources Organization, um, these employees, they have an option. I can either work from the office. Right? Those resources are there. The key is flexibility. If you give your employees the flexibility, they have more time and more attitude to work on your goals. That's what you got to do. And we will continue to try to do the best we can at that and prove every step of the way. So That's right. All right. Next week, Ricky, more higher calling. That's right. Have a great weekend. And uh, everyone, thanks for listening. Have a good one, folks. Good night.